here we are on lesson six. We've used one sensor so far, but now we're going to start to introduce more sensors. This is a soil moisture sensor. It has two prongs with conductive material on there. Basically, when it's inserted into soil, it's designed to check the volume of water within the soil. So we're going to use this as a monitoring system for our house plan. Perhaps we could give our plant a personality to let us know how it is feeling when it's not being watered. Again, we'll insert the growth cable, then we can put it securely within our plant, making sure that the M5 doesn't get touched with the soil. The program that we're going to be designing in this lesson will check the level of water and display it on the screen. It'll also change the emojis based on the level of water. If the soil is dry, we'll get a sad face. As the soil gets more moist, the sad face will change to a happier face. Let's get started in setting up our program. As always, we're going to name our program. I'm going to call this Plant Monitor. Now, for this lesson, we're going to be using the Earth Sensor, which is a little bit more complicated than the PIR sensor that we used in the previous lesson. One fact is that it's an analog sensor rather than a digital sensor. Digital sensors, as we have seen, only output a zero or a one, whereas an analog sensor will put out a range of values. So we also need to use some more complex logic to deal with this. So let's have a look in logic first. We used the if condition blocks in the last lesson but I want to do a little bit more of an explanation of these. You might have noticed there's a little gear symbol on the if block. If we click on it, we enter in and we have some other options that we can drag in. We used else in the last lesson, but there's also an else if block. What's that for? Let's drag one in. Now once we've done, we can exit. So. Here now we have if, do, else if, do, and then finally else. So why would we need all of these ifs and elses? Sometimes in our program we might want to check if more than one condition is true. For instance, in this program we want to check the status of the water level in the soil of the plant. Maybe we want to know if it's a little bit moist, very moist, or completely dry. So we need a lot of if conditions to check. Also, we're going to need a little bit more complex logic. We used this equals comparator block last time to check if the PIR sensor was equal to zero or one. But as I said, we have a range of values coming from this sensor. So rather than using equals, it would make more sense to use a less than or more than comparator. So that then we can check, is the level of the water coming in from the sensor? Is it more than 20? Is it less than 50? Maybe we want to compare two of those at the same time. For that, we'd also use this block here and so it might start to look something like this. If water level is more than 20. And then we'll drag this into the first section of the AND block. And then we can duplicate this here. And then in the second part, we'll add a less than. So if the water level is more than 20 and less than 50, then do something. This gives us a lot more room for different values than if we just use an if high value and if low value. We can then add different states for the plant monitor. So say for instance, we could add 
a very sad face for if the water level is extremely low. And then we could use an emoji to show off a mildly satisfied face when the level of water is adequate but could do with more. And then we can add a really happy face for if the water is completely sufficient. Okay, now we've had a look a bit at the logic, let's start to set up this program. Remember, we're using a unit, so we're going to need to go into the unit section and add the Earth Sensor module. So if we scroll down, it's on the third row. There we can find it, Earth Sensor. And if you want to learn more information, you can always press on the question mark. It's going to be plugged into port B, so that's okay. Good. So now if we go into units, we see here Earth. There's no PIR sensor because we didn't add it this time. Let's have a see what Earth values will appear. So in here we have two choices. We have get Earth analog value or get Earth digital value. Again, the difference is if I use the get Earth digital value block, I will only be able to sense is there water or isn't there water in the soil? Not particularly useful for this project. It would be much better for me to use the analog value sensor because then I can check the amount of water that's in the soil. So I'm going to drag that out there. We're going to be using a label to display the value of the sensor, but I want it tucked away to the side so that it's not going to inflict upon the emoji that I'm going to show on the screen. But then we can still see the value. So I'll put it down there in the corner. So we're also going to need a loop as well so that we can keep checking the value of the moisture sensor over and over again. And then we'll drag this if condition into here. We might also need some more else if conditions, but we'll change those as we go. To start off, before I start the logic of the program, I'm going to design a bunch of emojis for showing different happiness or sadness levels of the plant. So I'm going to duplicate three of these. You can design whatever emojis you want. I'm going to use smiley faces and happy faces to show the difference between the satisfaction of the plant. Remember, you can get creative and use whatever you like. I'm just giving you an example. And there we have it. Now I'm, uh, now I'm done with my emojis. I remember I said I wanted to show the value of the sensor down in the left hand corner of the M5 Go screen. So I've added a text label and I can go into UI to then drag that label in here. I'm going to put that in the first position of our loop and then drag this get earth analog value into that. Okay, now to get started with the logic. We're going to take this step by step as it can be a little bit complicated. First, we're going to have if condition. So the first if will be in the first if position, we're going to make a comparison. If if the analog value that we get is less than 20, twenty is a pretty low value. So we're going to show the sad face in here. 
because the water is definitely not sufficient to keep this plant alive. Now in this else if section, we're going to do a comparison of whether the value is above a certain level and also below a certain level. So we're going to need this comparator block and also the AND block. So first we'll put this comparator block in the first space of the AND block. Then we're going to check if the water value is more than 20. So again, we'll go back, get this analog value, then choose a more than symbol. And then we can just copy this from here. Okay, so now if it's more than 20 and we want it to be less, a sort of middle, middle range value, so we could try 40 perhaps. So we can copy this whole block here and then just change the values as we need. We might not get this perfect the first time, so you can mess around with the different values, experiment until you get the right results. I'm going to give between 20 and 40 a go. Okay. And then I'll put my happy face in there. Now we have two conditions. If the water value is less than 20, unhappy face. If it's more than that, then show the happy face. Okay. So now we can copy this block, but I realized in the start that I added an else block when I didn't really need it. I want another else if. So I can click back on the cog and then drag another else if in. And then I'll close that up. Now I can add this condition over here. This time I only want it to check if the input is higher than the max value. So I'm going to enter in 60. If it's more than 60, then display this super happy face. Okay, that's pretty much it for our program. Now let's do a quick test and see how it works. And here is the result of our code. We've managed to create a plant monitoring system. Think of ways that you could change the code to give a different output. Perhaps instead of smiley faces, you could use the emojis to show a bar which will show the level of the water. Or you could change the RGB bar's color depending on the level of water. You could even use sound if you really wanted an obnoxious noise to tell you when to water your plants. It's entirely up to you. If you get stuck, Remember, you can leave a comment, send us a message, but we'll see you in the next lesson.